you know, if I'm going to do videos about my hair, maybe I should like do it, you know? Uh, today, we are going to be doing the fourth and final recipe in the shampoo bar recipe week thing. Yeah, and we're going to be talking about my hair and the shampoo that I use for my hair and what I've come up with for all of that. And I will tell you more about it in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for week 21 of year three and recipe number four for shampoo bars. And as I said, today we are doing my shampoo bars and they're a little bit weird. And it all actually started with a clarifying shampoo that I made using Melt and Pour several years ago that had activated charcoal in it. And it was a very cool bar of soap. And I liked it a lot because, you know, it worked really well for my hair. Now, my hair very very thick it is it seems very very straight right but it has like a every other layer is a curl apparently this is what i've been told i can't see the back of my head so i just believe that that is the case because it, like why would someone lie to me about that is kind of my reasoning but anyway a lot of a lot of hair definitely a lot of hair and so if i have too much product build up it's going to definitely weigh down and I started using the clarifying shampoo for Mountain Pour, oh my gosh, a long time ago. And then I got really lazy because I don't know why, just reasons. I had noticed that the cold process shampoos really did mean that for my hair personally, I didn't have to condition it. And then within the past couple of years, since I've started doing like the, the dyeing thing, and so like I'm putting like color in my hair, which I never used to do before, it does get a little bit dry after just a shampoo with a cold process, and so a conditioner would help. But since I had already gotten used to using a cold process shampoo and no conditioner, I thought that maybe I could make a bar of soap that would do all the cleansing, but also do the moisture. And so that's kind of where this began. And this particular recipe, it's going to be a combination of melt and pour soap plus butters in it at rates that we're probably not supposed to use butters. But we're going to talk about it. We're going to get through the recipe. It's going to be a good time. You can see it and how it looks and all the things. And I mean, you can see my hair here. So that exists too, you know, but you can't see that in the video. We're going to talk about the stuff that I use on my hair in the video. So let's get to the video. And we will do that. Yes, this is a recipe that starts out with melt and pour. And I'm going to explain why. It's okay. Now for this particular recipe, I'm doing 80% melt and pour, 20% mango butter. For my actual recipe for my hair, I do shea. I prefer shea over mango. And the additives I use are activated charcoal, coconut milk, powder, at 1% and then the e-wax is going to be or a beeswax at 1% as well just should you find it to be too you know soft now for the melt and pour that I made I used my cream shave soap recipe but realistically you can start out with any melt and pour that you would like with this and I think I've done the cream soap on the channel if I have not let me know and I'll make that video but the reason why I do this is because I again as I said am looking to make a clarifying shampoo and so there are a lot of reasons why melt and pour would really shine with that goal in mind. Now, up until about two years ago, I was the person that shampooed my hair every single day. And the reason I shampooed my hair every single day was because A, I was raised like that. And two, I am a daily runner. And so I get sweaty each and every day. And so cleaning my hair 
was a very, very important thing for me. Because in the past, I would use, you know, regular shampoo on my hair and I found that I needed to clean it to actually, you know, wash it every single day to get all of the stuff off of my hair, all of the sweat and the buildup. Even though I've never been a, a product person, I don't use a whole lot of product, but the sweat and the dirt and stuff that comes along with that, I found that I needed to wash my hair every single day. I needed to do so without it being overly drying. And so a number of years ago, one of my stylists suggested that I use a clarifying shampoo. Now, a clarifying shampoo is exactly what it sounds like. It is meant to clarify the hair and the scalp. It does that by removing the oil and the buildup and the grease and everything to you know, leave you with a hair shaft that is actually clean without you know, putting more of the, the buildup from the shampoo onto the hair, therefore making continuing to make it feel dirty. Now, once I started looking into clarifying shampoos, I of course, you know, started using cold process shampoos, and that's when I started making these. And I used them on myself, and I found that I didn't actually have to clean my hair every single day. So there was something to that. Removing the gunk is a good thing, obviously, but even more important is making sure that there's no residue from the actual shampoo left behind. So that worked out really well for me. But I was finding that with daily use of a cold process shampoo, yeah, my hair was getting dry. And so I wanted to find a happy medium where I get a clarifying shampoo that's going to remove all of that via surfactants. Like that's how you do it. And um, soap is the most obvious and easiest to source surfactant, right? But still maintaining all of the moisture that I really needed for my hair if I was going to do daily washings. And so that's when I turned to Mountain Pour as an alternative. Why? Because melt and pour is, well, I mean, it's it's built fundamentally just like a cold process recipe, except you have all of the copious amounts of glycerin, which is a humectant and can help bring moisture to the hair. So I liked that a lot. Started playing with that and then realized, well, I could really kind of up the awesome by pushing the limits of the melt and pour, you know, soap base to, well, past its limit really by putting in some butters to really further on that moisture and get me that moisture lock that would allow me to go, you know, several days between washings. To this day, now I currently shampoo every second or third day, but honestly, I could probably get away with shampooing once a week or once every five or six days because of the added moisture I do have within the melt and pour, as well as the shea butter that I put into this and, you know, all the extra glycerin humectant love. So that is absolutely great. Now, this particular recipe, as I said, you can put the e-wax or the beeswax in for firming up. I haven't found that it's necessary. It's not an overly soft bar of soap by any stretch of the imagination. But if you want to, you know, give it that extra little oomph, depending on your base recipe of your mountain pour, that's completely fine. Now, with this recipe as well, again, one of the big benefits for people who pay attention to the pH and are part of that, you know, pH battle within the shampoo world is melt and pour naturally has a lower pH than the regular cold process shampoo, just because of the solvents and everything that are put into it. And so it's not much lower, it's maybe a point, but that does get you a point closer to neutral should you be concerned with the pH of stuff. To the being concerned of the pH of stuff bit, I think we need to do an FAQ on this right after this series wraps up. So I'm thinking we're going to do an FAQ involving, you know, chelators versus clarifiers because I've seen a lot of comments about that in my comment section. People not understanding the difference. There is a difference. One is a, a reasonably okay thing to use, i.e. clarifying shampoo every once in a while. And the other is uh, something that you should use pretty sparingly, the chelator. But we can do an FAQ on that. We can also do an FAQ on the pH because we have touched on it and there have been a number of conversations and questions about, well, why don't you use the surfactant-based or, you know, the detergent-based uh, soaps, shampoos? First, we're going to do one of those tomorrow. But second, uh, there's, uh, there's a debate about all of that. And I'm not really on either side of it because I don't think either side is right or wrong. I I can't do that. I think it's all about your own hair type. But 
with this one, look at this. It's very gentle, tiny, tight little bubbles. I'm using it on my arm because that's where hair is, you know, and has a very good hand feel, has a great head feel. So again, it gently cleanses. It does get rid of the impurities because of the activated charcoal and whatnot. And it is still moisturizing enough that I can theoretically use this if I use it every second or third day as a two-in-one shampoo plus conditioner or every fifth or sixth day as a regular shampoo bar that I then follow up with a conditioner bar. So options for shampoo and melt and pour, totally one of them. And there it is, my shampoo bar recipe that I use for my hair. And I like it. I am, like I said, very, very lazy. So this is a double whammy for me. I can shampoo my hair and I can also condition my hair because of the copious amounts of shea butter within this. And this is something that, I, again, I was playing with for my hair specifically. I don't know if it's something that is going to be a make or break for all hair types. Obviously, as we've talked about throughout all of these recipes, nothing is going to be a great shampoo bar for all hair types across the board. But that is also true of shampoos that you get, you know, in the liquid whatever. Everybody has a different type. And realistically, for different textured hair or straight hair, all the different hair patterns kind of need different stuff as well. So while this might not be the thing for everybody, it's certainly the thing for me. And so if you have hair that's like mine, try the recipe. Let me know what you think for sure. All of these shampoo bars are available at soapandclay.com with the exception of this guy. I don't put it on the website because I've always, always ever had the three shampoo bars. And so I don't put this on. But if you're interested, you can send me a message in your order notes and I will send you one, you know, just to give you and you can try it out. Yes, I am out of here for today. I have realized that I am very, very pale, you know, like I'm really, really pale and I'm leaving for Disney soon. And so I need to go get my, my, my fake tan on. So if I end up looking orange tomorrow, just don't laugh at me. Okay. I actually, I don't think it'll matter because I can mess up these lights so much that I can just look completely blown out like a marshmallow if I end up looking too orange. So I've got that going for me. But yes, thank you, Sudzers, for joining me today. I always appreciate you. You guys are amazing and awesome and super cool. And I love getting to share all these recipes with you guys in the Discord and chit chat about the different infusions and the things that you guys like the best for your hair and all the jazz. So thank you for being a part of those conversations. You are all awesome. I already said that. I'm going to go get myself Tanner on. Again, don't make fun of me tomorrow. Uh, I will see you tomorrow, though for another round of Soapy Fun. Bye.